Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today I want to tell you about 20 hidden gem flicks you can currently catch on Netflix. This video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN, and later in the video I'm going to explain to you how they're going to help you get more out of your Netflix subscription. So I've been gone for a while, and now that I'm back, I want to tell you about 20 really great movies on Netflix that are hard to find, that you probably haven't seen, and yes, there are a lot of movies on this list that I've never, ever talked about on this channel before. And yes, these are ranked worst to best, with the worst still being a decent recommendation with Circle. Now this is a very small movie, it's kind of like a one act type of thing, in fact it even feels somewhat theatrical because you're really in one room. This is about a group of people who find themselves in a circle. It's like an escape the room type thing, they have to figure out how to get out of this situation, I don't want to say too much, but the stakes are high, it is life and death, uh, people are being taken out of this circle uh, systematically, and everyone's trying to be the last man standing, so with that premise, it's pretty fun. Cinematically, there's not much to it, it's, it, it plays out kind of like a short film, it's, it's not that special, but the concept is great, it's a good delivery of the concept, there's some decent performances in there, and it, it's a good 90 minute watch, but keep in mind, this one's all the way at the back of the list, um, they get much better as we go forward. A Patch of Fog stars Cunleth Hill, who you recognize as the eunuch from Game of Thrones. He plays a famous writer who is a kleptomaniac, he, he gets off on stealing basically inconsequential things, but he gets busted by a security guard who just desperately wants a friend, who relentlessly blackmails him with the tapes of him stealing into sort of trying to coerce him into this friendship, and the movie gets dark. It is a slow burn, so it takes a long time for, for it to really go where it's going. Um, so you have to be patient with this one, but if you like that concept and you like the actors that are in it, this is a great little watch. Ultimately, you know me, I like my dark movies, and this is a good dark one that I think a lot of people could watch because it's not, visually, it's not it's it's not a gore fest or anything like that. Bullethead stars Adrian Brody and John Malkovich as a couple of bank robbers that are hiding out in a warehouse that is also inhabited by a vicious dog. So it's almost like a creature feature, like a Jaws kind of thing where they're just hiding from this vicious man-eating dog. Uh, there's some great scenes of tension in it, obviously good performances from those guys. And, and good performances from the dog as well. This one was kind of a good nail biter. Uh, it looks great. I'm surprised more people don't know about it. Another one that's small in scale because it's just them in the warehouse with the dog for the most part. Antonio Banderas makes an appearance and he shows up on the next film as well. But I, I like this one. This is one of those ones that I just sort of threw on just as a whim and, and just really enjoyed it and was surprised how much I liked it. Automata stars Antonio Banderas in this dystopian future where robots, androids are all over the place. It's grungy, it's a cyberpunk thing. And another one, a I don't want to say a small movie, it's a small story. It'd be great to see more in this universe. This universe could be much more expansive. It feels like this is a story that could take place like in the Blade Runner universe, maybe before the events of Blade Runner or something like that. It's not. It just feels that way. Dylan McDermott has a really cool role. There's some really great effects with the androids. This one also gets somewhat bleak. And this one, compared to the other two that I just mentioned where I said they feel like a kind of a made for TV thing, this one feels like something you could see in the theater. It feels more cinematic. Uh, and there's a lot more artistry behind the cinematography and everything as well, which is why I like this one. Ultimately, falls a little bit short, uh, I, just in the sense that I, I wanted more out of it, but that's also a good thing. I liked it enough that I wanted more, but just keep in mind, it does suffer from that pretty common symptom. All right, so the weirdest, not the weirdest movie on the list, but the weirdest one for me to recommend on this list to you is Inconceivable. Now, this one was featured in my big Nicolas Cage video. I'll put a link to that in the description, but I know some of you are tired of hearing about that one. But this one, 
barely stars Nicolas Cage. He's barely in it. But Gina Gershon and Nikki Wellen are the stars of this. Now, Nikki Wellen plays a surrogate, and Gina Gershon and Nicolas Cage are married. They're not able to conceive, but they have this huge house. And Nikki Wellen basically is a live-in surrogate. This very, very much feels like it's a Lifetime original movie, but it's good. Like, I I, I watched it because I was binge watching all of the Nicolas Cage movies on Netflix, so I did not have expectations for this one, and I really got into it. Now, it's got some really lame elements to it. It starts off kind of bad, but it just really kind of keeps going, and I was surprised where this one went, and I was very intrigued to see how this one concluded. I liked the way it wrapped up. I liked a lot of things about it. This one surprised me just because it's not the type of thing I would typically watch, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, but again, we're near the back of the list, but I'm getting ready to jump things up here with some really premium picks. Unlocked is another one that you easily could have seen in the theater. Just, I think it fell a little bit short, but it's got a killer cast in it. It's got Numi Rapace, John Malkovich, Tony Collette, Orlando Bloom crawled out from whatever rock he's been hiding under for the past 10 years to do this movie. And it's like a gritty kind of spy thing. It feels fairly realistic. It ultimately goes a little far-fetched, but it's so, somewhat grounded. It feels like kind of a, I don't wanna say a poor man's Jason Bourne, but it feels kind of like a Jason Jason Bourne movie without the just like really great action. There is some good action in this, but not not to that level, but you still get the control room stuff. You, there's a lot of espionage stuff, counterterrorism stuff, uh, and obviously great performances from all of those people. It looks great. Cinematically, this one looks, again, like it should have been in the theater, but it's, it's just one of those hidden movies that just didn't get any play. I think because it, it like misses the mark by just a by just a tad, but it's still well worth watching. Mean Dreams is one of the last movies Bill Paxton starred in before he unfortunately died in the operation room. Uh, I don't know why more people didn't talk about that when that happened, but it's a shame that he's gone. I've, I've always liked Bill Paxton, and this is a decent little indie flick for him to go out on. He actually plays a pretty bad dude in this one. He's a really overbearing father, but the, the center of this story is a couple of teenagers, a boy and a girl, and Bill Paxton plays the local sheriff who not only is he trying to keep them apart, but he's also up to some really bad deeds, uh, and, and sort of like a pursuit thing ensues, and the less you know about this one, the better, but if you like those types of movies, those types of like small town thriller types of things, uh, this is a good one because Bill Paxton gives a really, really great performance, and then the kids are great as well, and it's just got this dark, moody thing. It's the type of movie I really tend to enjoy. Uh, that said, I probably liked it more than I think a lot of people will, but I still do recommend it. Pusher is a remake that not only does no one know that it's a remake, they don't even know this movie exists, but this is actually produced by Nicholas Winding Refn, who's most famous for the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. But before that, he actually did a series of movies called Pusher that are really great. They're about a drug dealer and they're really well done, they're really gritty. This is a remake of the original that's done with like a new glossy sheen. I don't wanna say it's a necessary remake, but it's different enough. Like it takes the same storyline, kind of the one crazy night of this drug dealer trying to get enough money to pay somebody that he owes and it's got this great look to it the performances are good it's a really compelling story if you like those one crazy night type of movies i've got one more way further up on this list but pusher is a is a good pick and i really like recommending it on this list because i know it's a hidden gem like it never comes up in my netflix feed and it it definitely should all right, the first pseudo horror movie on this list, and there will be plenty more horror coming at you in the month of October, or even just later in September here, but Back Country is about a couple who go on a hiking trip, they get lost, and then they kind of find that they're maybe being stalked by a giant bear. Uh, this one, very similar to Bullethead, is like a creature feature. You've just got an animal pursuing humans. This one, though, you don't see the bear for a really long time, and what worked about Backcountry for me is I was interested in their journey. So there's like interpersonal stuff going on with them. 
that kept me glued to the screen. There's some other elements about them sort of getting lost before you really see the bear that kept me invested. And then the bear is almost a surprise. The only reason I'm telling you about it is because I do want you to watch the movie. I do want you to be patient to wait for it. This one is not going to be for people with sensitive eyeballs or sensitive stomachs. That said, if you like movies like that, uh, this is a good watch. This, this one, it's not quite a horror movie, but it's damn close. And if you like those movies that are kind of in between, definitely check out Backcountry. All right, and then for number 11, which is the last one on my bottom 10, is Spring Breakers with James Franco. Now, this one got a decent amount of play when it came out because it was just such an oddball thing for him to be doing character-wise. And it also had like some ex-Disney stars in it as well that are doing very bad things. It's directed by the same a director who's famous for the movie Kids. And this is a gnarly movie, another one not for sensitive viewers and certainly not for younger viewers. Do not watch this one with the kids, whatever you do. James Franco plays a drug dealer named Alien and it's about some girls that are on spring break that sort of get mixed up with him and they just go down this like rabbit hole of debauchery. Even though things really do come off the rails in a way that's not the best, I still I watched this one a while ago and I still remember it pretty vividly. Um, if you like those types of indie movies that are just gritty and wild, Spring Breakers is, is definitely a gem. So I mentioned CyberGhost VPN at the beginning of this video, and they're the sponsors of this episode. There is a link in the description. Go check it out, you can learn more about them. But a lot of people are using VPNs nowadays to protect themselves online. It keeps you, your activities, your data, your information hidden. Additionally, what GhostVPN does is they're gonna allow you to see what's on Netflix and other streaming services in other countries. That also means for my international viewers, those of you in the UK and Australia who always complain that you can't watch the movies that I'm recommending, for instance, just for, for US viewers, the movie Shaft with Samuel L. Jackson was in theaters here while it was on Netflix in other parts of the world and you could access it. You can have simultaneous connections for up to seven devices with just one subscription and you get unlimited access to over 4,500 servers in over 60 countries. The app's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Amazon, Fire Stick, Linux, and more. They have 24 seven support in multiple languages. It also includes some safety features that blocks malicious websites and ads and things like that. You get a 45 day money back guarantee if it's not working out for you or you just don't like using it. So you really don't have anything to lose. Again, link in the description, go check them out. I really appreciate them sponsoring this episode. It's gonna allow the channel to grow. And like I said, I use it. I enjoy the service and I think a lot of you will as well. But let's get back into the video with one that I have recommended recently that has a lot in common with Mean Dreams and that's Cop Car. Now in this one, Kevin Bacon plays a cop who is also up to some dirty deeds, but a couple of kids take his car for a joy ride and he has something in that car that not only should the kids not see, nobody should see. So he has to find the kids. They have to escape him. It's, it's again, another like small one. It, it takes place on like a stretch of road. It doesn't have this big expansive story, but it's perfectly told. Like it's, Kevin Bacon is great in it. The kids do a good job. There's a shootout or two in this one that is pretty fantastic. So if, if you like Mean Dreams, you definitely need to watch Cop Car because I've got it ranked fairly high above it on this list. Another one that largely takes place in a car, in fact, it exclusively takes place in a car, is Locke, starring Tom Hardy. In this one, you are with him in his BMW SUV on a stretch of highway in England somewhere, and he's on the phone and talking to himself for the entire movie. Now, if that sounds boring, I can tell you it works very well. I had the good fortune of seeing this one in the theater at a film festival, and I've watched it again since. It's been on Netflix, and it's a really great performance from him, but more importantly, a very compelling story that's being told to you through the phone. It works really well. Yes, the setup is kind of a gimmick to get you to watch this movie, but keep in mind, it's the perfect way to tell the story that they're telling. This is not a crime movie. This is not one where somebody gets murdered. This is not one where he's running from the police. It's still 
manages to be incredibly compelling. I really, really like this one. If you're a fan of Tom Hardy, this is a must watch. Traitor stars Don Cheadle as a suspected terrorist. Now, the only problem I have with this one is that it's PG-13 and there is some adult content in it that probably should have been shot in a way that would have made this movie rated R. So it's a little bit watered down. However, great performance from Don Cheadle, great performance from Guy Pearce, compelling story, twists and turns, beautifully shot, did okay, as I remember, in the theater when it came out. Like, there was a little bit of buzz about it, and then this movie just faded into obscurity. Another one that has a little bit in common with the Bourne movies, uh, if you never saw this one, put it on your queue, watch it soon. I don't expect it to be on Netflix too much longer. One that just recently got added to Netflix is Horns. This one stars Daniel Radcliffe as a guy who wakes up one day, starts growing horns out of the top of his head. It's got a funny gimmick where People notice them, but they don't notice them as being a problem. This one's based on a popular book. From what I understand, the movie is a fairly good adaptation of the book. This one gets dark. This is one of those movies that is a fantastic watch as you prepare for Halloween. That's not really a horror movie. So if you're a scaredy cat and you don't like horror movies, but you want to get in the spirit of Halloween, this would be a great one to check out. The Salvation is a Western starring Mads Mikkelsen, Eva Green, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who you know is Negan from The Walking Dead. Really great Western movie that does a few things that sort of subvert your expectations in terms of a Western. So this is one that I think people who don't traditionally watch Westerns can watch and enjoy. It's very polished. It's only a couple of years old. It looks beautiful and great cinematography. Some of the best featured on this list so far. Great performances. But it also, if you are a fan of Westerns, I recommend this as well because it does a few things, subtle things, that again subvert expectations for what would happen in a Western. Uh, they're subtle, not everyone's gonna get them, but you don't have to to enjoy this movie. I don't wanna spoil them here. I, I liked it though. I, I, in fact, just talking about it now, it's, it's one of those times when I, I wanna watch this one again. Okay, and I promised one more One Crazy Night movie on this list, and that's Toro. Now, this one is foreign language. It's spoken in Spanish, but this is a great, I don't want to say gangster movie, even though there is like a mob element in it, but it's about a guy who's trying to get out of the mob, and he's doing a pretty good job of it, but he gets pulled back in, so to speak, uh, for, for one last thing, and it it plays out well. It's not what you would expect, like, oh, we need you to pull off one more job. He really sort of gets sucked into it in a way where he cannot get out of it. That's not what makes this movie great. What makes this movie great is there's some incredible sequences. Some of the stuff this guy has to do, Toro, to achieve his goals are pretty wild. Some really, really great scenes in this movie. If you don't typically watch movies with subtitles, I would give this one a try. You do have to do a fair amount of reading, not a lot. There's some scenes and things that happen in this movie that I haven't seen in other movies, and you're missing out by just refusing to read subtitles. Possibly the oldest one on this list is The Legend of Drunken Master, which is a pretty old school Jackie Chan movie, and it's actually a sequel to Drunken Master. Now, this is a hidden gem because I was hunting this movie down for a long time. I couldn't find where I could pay to watch it or anything. And I mentioned it in a podcast or something, and somebody told me it's on Netflix. And I, you literally have to type in almost the whole name for it to come up. I don't know why it's buried so bad, but this movie absolutely influenced Kill Bill, as well as a bunch of other movies. Incredible action sequences, incredible fight sequences, Amazing stunts by Jackie Chan. He's doing everything on screen that includes falling backwards into a bed of hot coals, that includes jumping off of balconies. It's just really, really great stuff. Again, you do have to read subtitles for this one. Um, I feel like you don't have to read too much because there's so much action. You're not gonna be spending the whole movie trying to keep up, but if you're looking for something you've never seen and you wanna watch some just really top-notch action, the Legend of Drunken Master would be really hard to beat. All right, so let's jump from one of the oldest ones on this list to one of the newest with Burning. Now this came out in 2018 and it stars Steven Yin, who you also know from The Walking Dead. And it's foreign language again. This one requires a lot of reading, but it's very, very well done. Very beautiful, very poetic. It's about love, it's about hate. It's it's really pretty impressive the way that this one plays out. It's a slow burn, but the payoff is well worth it. If you wanna watch just a really 
good, well-rounded, like award-winning type of a movie, Burning is a really, really great bet. As you can tell, it's near the very top of the list. Brick is the first film from director Ryan Johnson, who's most famous for having ruined Star Wars, but his next film, Knives Out, is getting a lot of press at the time. And he also did Looper. He did another movie called The Brothers Bloom that I happen to really like, but I think Brick might be my favorite. This stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and it is a neo-noir film. He is a detective. It's like a gumshoe type of thing. They have this really odd way of talking. It's not Shakespeare, but it's like old school kind of gumshoe type of talking, yet they're all high school students. I had a couple of picks on my Flicks of the Week earlier this week, there's a link to that video in the description, where I sort of compared them to like, sort of like teen movies that had this R-rated hard edge, and this is similar, like you're in a high school, it's got elements of almost like an after school special. However, there's a lot of just artistry going into this one, a lot of creativity. It's really kind of an, just an incredible movie. If you've never seen it, I cannot recommend this one enough. And then one that just recently got added that I'm very excited to tell you about, Starred Up, is a really fantastic prison movie. I've liked this one for a while. It's actually from the same director who more recently did Hell or High Water, which I love. I think it's my favorite favorite from that director, and Outlaw King, the Netflix original movie from last year, which I also really liked. I think Startup is maybe better than Outlaw King. It's a really, really great prison movie. Good cast, great performances, it's gritty, it's raw. I've only seen it the one time, but it was a few years ago, and I still remember it vividly. Uh, I think it's one of the best things Netflix has recently added to the platform. If you've never seen it, add it to your queue, watch it soon. Keep in mind, it is a prison movie. There is some really raw stuff in this movie. Uh, if that's not for you, do not watch this movie, but if you like prison movies, this is, uh, this is a top tier one, especially for one that has come out in the past 10 years, even though this one's only a couple of years old. That said, if you like this type of content, please click that subscribe button and be sure to click the little bell icon so you get notified when I put out new videos like this one. I wanna thank our sponsor, Ghost VPN. Don't forget to go check out their link in the description. Check the service out, see if it's for you. It'll help you be more secure in your browsing. It'll help you get more out of your Netflix and your other movie service subscriptions. But I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking this one out and you will see me on the next one. This channel just hit 70,000 subscribers, so I wanna do a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Here are the people who are donating $5 and above. If you've been enjoying the channel for a while, you have these people to thank for keeping the channel alive. And if you have been enjoying the content for a long time, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You do get some benefits. There's a link in the description. Go over there, check it out, see if that's for you as well. But at the very least, give these guys a big thank you in the comments below because they're the reason you get to watch this video today.